Quinn. Welcome to my vlog. So today we're going to be making beer tree stuffed pretzel bites. And this recipe is based off of a tasty video. However, as you'll see, it's way more complicated and a little more difficult than the tasty video makes it out to be. And that's totally okay. Um, because cooking does not look like tasting videos. In terms of what you need to make this recipe, you need pizza dough. Um, that's what you're going to use to actually make the pretzels an egg for the egg wash, uh, baking soda and cornstarch, cheddar cheese, beer, and salt. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and pour out your beer so it can settle. Um, you wanna make sure that you don't get foam as you're trying to simmer the beer. So you're gonna wanna pour it into a glass, let it foam and settle and then foam and settle. So um, the recipe only calls for half of a cup to be mixed in with the cheese. However, I found the last time I made this recipe that the beer flavor didn't come out strongly enough. So I'm actually going to use most of the can. The only thing I'm going to do at this point is after the foam is all, you know, settled down, I'm going to go ahead and take two tablespoons and pour it into the bowl that I'll use for my egg wash later on. Um, and this is going to ensure that I have that beer set aside and then can just use the rest uh, in the beer cheese mix filling. So now we're going to mix together our cheese and our cornstarch. Um, so you're going to add in three cups of cheese um, and this should be shredded. Um, cheddar for both the flavor profile and also uh, I'm lactose intolerant and cheddar is naturally low in lactose and many brands are actually lactose free. Um, so that means even lactose intolerant people can enjoy this treat. And then you need two tablespoons of cornstarch. And the cornstarch is gonna help the cheese kind of congeal and stick together. That way as it's melted, it'll not be like a liquid. So after you've added it, you don't just like let it sit, you're gonna go ahead and stir, uh, stir the uh, cheese and cornstarch together until the cheese is actually completely coated in the cornstarch. Yeah, and uh, it might not be completely white, but there's not like clumps, so you can just assume that that's as mixed as it's gonna get. All right, so by the time the uh, cheese and cornstarch are mixed together, the beer should be settled. So it's time to go ahead and simmer it. So you're gonna pour it all into a pot and then set the burner on high. And then you just wait. Okay. So once the beer is simmering, it's time to go ahead and add in the cheese and the cornstarch. And then you're gonna stir uh, so that you get it melting. And so the beer and the cheese and the cornstarch are all gonna melt together. Um, and you're gonna just keep stirring um, and watching it until it congeals into more of a like slimy kind of texture as opposed to a pure liquid. If it, start, yeah. if it starts bubbling like this, you wanna turn the heat down because uh, you don't actually wanna boil your cheese filling. Um, and that's also why it's important to keep stirring is you don't want to burn the bottom. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, pretty like well integrated and mixed at this point. So I'm actually gonna turn the heat off entirely um, and then move it to a different burner so that I don't have to cook this. Um, and at this point, you can see that it's very well mixed. Everything is how it should be. And so we're actually gonna let it congeal. Um, if we were to try and pour it in uh, right now, it's just liquid, right? That's very difficult to work with. But after a couple minutes, it's gonna cool and solidify a little, and then it's gonna be much easier to actually use. 
So once you've waited a couple minutes, um, this might be like 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, and your cheese has started to congeal, so it's a little more gloopy as opposed to like liquid, uh, then it's time to go ahead and start making your pretzel bites. Um, and you can try and prep your dough in advance, but what I found is because dough is gonna contract, it's gonna shrink, the prep work you do, you're gonna have to immediately undo once you're ready to add the cheese. So it's easier to just leave your pound of dough all together and slice it and roll it into balls as you uh, actually are ready to add the cheese in. So you need the dough as you work. So you're gonna uh, slice off a clump of pizza dough and it will be sticky. Uh, and you're gonna go ahead, so you slice that off. You're gonna roll it into a ball between your hands and then knead it a little, right? That's the whole point of this and stretch it out a little. And when you stretch it, you wanna make sure that it's like thick enough that you're not gonna pop through, but also like open so that you can wrap it around your cheese when you plop your cheese in. So you have it kind of open, you have like a space ready for cheese to go. And then you're gonna take your cheese and add it in. And the more solidified your cheese is, the easier this is gonna be. Because then you have your cheese and you have to restretch your dough to try and get it around and let that cheese stay in the center. And I am awful at this. Um, and so you just kind of do this, if you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then the goal is you want all of your cheese in the center and then you kind of twist it to keep it close. Um, and you can use like a dumpling motion and it takes precision and skill that I don't have. Um, I always will keep some water on hand because that can kind of help with my lack of dumpling abilities because I can just wet the dough to kind of help that crease form. Um, kind of the same way that you would use uh, water and clay to help that out. So there's our first one that may or may not stay together uh, because I'm bad at this. No, there's a hole. Well, that happened. This is ruined. You can't really do much once you rip a hole in it. Um, I actually have no idea how to salvage this, so uh, rip, I guess. Be careful. Don't do that. That's bad. So as you literally just observed, you do want to be careful not to squeeze uh, too thin. Yeah, and I honestly just try and roll all the cheese inward. Um, and then you can kind of twist like a dumpling. And I repeat, I am bad at this. They make it look so easy in the Tasty video, and it is not. Oh my gosh, this is not fun. I hate, I don't know why I decided to do this. An interesting note though about the cornstarch is that it does keep the cheese together pretty well. So if you like fail um, and have like a thing that's open, it's kind of okay um, because the cheese will stick together to itself. So even while you're boiling and baking, um, the cheese will stay in the center if you can just get it more or less correct and let it stay upright. Um,
And once you kind of have them all made, you can try and do some repair work with any that you have that have kind of come open. Um, it might not work, but like you can try. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got 11. 11 plus two failed, so it does make about a dozen. Um, and the next step is gonna be to actually turn them into pretzels. So your pretzel lumps are made. Um, the next step is going to be to both preheat your oven and bo start boiling water. So you're going to preheat your oven to 425. No, I don't want a big time, but I think it's preheated. I don't know if this oven hates me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then 425. Great. And now we're also going to go ahead and turn this bur burner on high. Um, and let that water boil. Um, so now you're literally just waiting for a pot of water to boil. Um, and then once it is boiling, you're gonna dump in your baking soda. It's gonna make a huge foamy mess. And then you're gonna add in your little dough balls. And that's what gives um, the pretzels that kind of pretzel -y exterior, the kind of like crust. All right, so once your water is boiling, you're gonna add in a quarter of a cup of baking soda. Um, and this is five cups of water that you're boiling. And things are gonna get crazy and super foamy. Ah, uh, science, you know? And then you're gonna put in your little dough balls. And this is how they go from being like lumps of dough to pretzels. And if you are magic and can do them all at the same time, that's better because you really only want them to be in there for about 30 seconds. And then you're gonna scoop them out uh, and then press them, uh, not press, place them on your baking sheet. And this is where counting comes into place because you can definitely lose these friends in the foam. So it helps to know how many you're trying to scoop for. Notice when you boiled, um, the texture of the exterior will have changed a little bit um, because you've like pretzelized them. Another cool thing is that the cheese will have stayed inside even if it's revealed. So like, even if you messed up, you can still get some form of pretzel bites in the end. So the next step is going to be to do a beer egg wash. So I have my two tablespoons of beer from earlier, and then I'm gonna crack an egg in there. You wanna stir, mix the beer with the egg, and then split up that egg yolk. Um, and you're gonna do use this to do an egg wash on the pretzel exteriors to help that crust form. So you take your brush, you take your egg wash, you know, be generous with it. You want them to be well coated. And now you're gonna put them in the oven and let them bake for 20 to 25 minutes. So uh, I did slightly misspeak earlier. Um, it is 15 minutes, not 20. Um, and as you can see at 15, they are a nice golden color. Um, if you're smart uh, and have the cheese facing upwards, it doesn't melt out as you bake, as you can notice from the couple that have the cheese at the top. However, if you have any like holes or weaknesses facing down, as you can see, the cheese will then ooze out. Um, another thing I do want to point out is that there's quite a bit of cheese left over. Um, this recipe that Tasty made, the portions are very wonky. I don't know why it is like it is. However, in the end, you do have a pretty tasty uh, product, even if they are so difficult to make. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. 
uh, maybe consider trying this recipe out and definitely let me know if you have tips or if you managed to make it work better for you. Thanks for watching.